Hey, what's up, Scott Balkum here, and this is Raw Cuts. Yep, it's just another cooking show. But today, we're doing the perfect New York slice. Raw, yeah! So I have always been a huge fan of the New York style pepperoni pizza slice. It's been one of my favorites since I was, well, I've always been this tall, but it is absolutely a flavor and a combination of crunch and crisp and tangy and sweet and pepperoni and cheese. And it's just amazing. And to get that slice has taken me quite a while. It has been an absolute dream of mine to achieve what I've achieved today. It's just so monumental, you're gonna be excited. Trust me, you want this pizza, I think. The dough, been working on it for quite a while. I can't tell you how many delicious pizzas we've gone through, and we've got it. We've got it down. It's going to make the best, best New York slice you've ever had just outside of uh, New York. Today we're gonna be making dough, we're gonna be making the sauce, and then we're gonna be making the pizza. And the ingredients here are going to be for two pizzas for the dough. Now be forewarned, if you want pizza right now, this is not the dough for you. It takes three days to make it, and there's a little bit of a process that you need to do during those three days. It's not the end of the world, it's just a couple of little things. Just understand that going in. Now, we're gonna start with a high protein flour. King Arthur makes it, others make it. This is 12.9% unbleached flour. You can get a little bit higher. Don't get wheat and don't get bleached. It needs to be a good quality, unbleached, high protein flour. This is 490 grams of that. We're gonna put that into the mixer first. You can do this with by hand if you want. Just understand there's about 14, 15 minutes of you mixing by hand. Unless you got Popeye's arms, you're, you're gonna want a dough hook on your uh, KitchenAid. All right, the next thing we're gonna add is the water. This is filtered water, 306 grams. We're gonna add that in. And then this is active yeast, dry yeast. It is 1.7 grams, exactly 1.7 grams. We're gonna mix that in. And then we're going to turn this on on low, after we raise it up. We're gonna turn it on low for two minutes, and we're gonna set our timer. It's now two minutes, so we're going to add in 10 grams of fine sea salt. Just gonna pour that in gently, and we're going to let it mix again after we get all of that in there. Going again for two more minutes. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna add in the olive oil. Now this is not EVOO, this is not virgin, extra virgin. This is just straight olive oil. And there's a reason. This isn't your pull out your finest dining kind of thing. This is a New York slice. So we're gonna stop it. We're gonna lower this down and we're going to take the dough here and we're gonna open it up and I'm gonna create kind of a little pocket. The reason is, is because otherwise it just feels like it's really, really wrong when you don't. But it will incorporate if you don't do this. So we're gonna make the pocket in there and then we're gonna pour in exactly 38 grams of olive oil right into the middle. And then what I like to do is to bring the edges up and let them all kiss so that the oil is trapped inside. 
and that will help incorporate this just a little bit faster because otherwise you're gonna be like me looking at it and going <sighs> now you need to mix it on low for 11 minutes and if in the last two minutes it's not gooping up like you want you can add a little bit more flour just a little bit help give it a little bit of traction All right, 11 minutes have passed. Pull that down, Let's get it off the dough hook. And there we have our dough. And it's, uh, you know, it's a little soft pliable dough. So we can take this and divide it in half. And we're gonna place it in a greased pan. I like to go ahead and just kind of start to fold it a little bit. You're not, you're not assembling the pizza dough yet. Just trying to put it into a little ball. Same thing with this one. And we're gonna let it rest in the refrigerator for one hour. Make sure you grease both sides of the pan. And then that goes in the refrigerator for one hour. Okay, it has been one hour since we put these in the refrigerator. And so all we need to do now is they, they won't expand much because this is a very uh, slow process. But all we're going to do is we're gonna take them and we're gonna pull and tuck under, pull and tuck under, pinch, pull and tuck under, pinch, pull, pull and tuck under. And then just gonna pinch it in the bottom just like when we did our, our buns, get it nice and tight, and then place it right back in the middle. Same thing with this one. We're gonna pull and tuck under. Just keep pulling, pinch it, tuck under. Then place it back in the pans. Now, these pans, you're gonna put them in the refrigerator and let them set for eight hours. Then you're gonna pull them out and let them get to room temperature for four hours. Then they go back in the fridge for the remainder of the three days. Now you can pull this dough after one full day, but I highly recommend you to do the full three days. The reason, it changes the dough. The full fermentation process is three days and it is magical. So now let's make the sauce. The sauce we're using Red Pack tomato puree in the 29 ounce can. There's a lot of reasons for this. Don't skimp, don't cheap, don't, if you can't find it, buy it on Amazon, but get the Red Pack Puree. It is the best base you can start with, and we've tried them all. And I gotta tell you, this one, it's perfect. So we're gonna start off with a full can here, and we're gonna dump it into our mixing bowl. This is not a can opener. You cannot open a can with a garlic press. <laughs> you know what'd be great? Can I have a... <laughs> I'm, gonna need, I'm gonna need a can opener. We're just gonna place this right here. Would you be so kind as to hand me a can opener? Th oh, thanks. So this will not open garlic just so you know. And this can has been through the ringer, but you know what? It still tastes delicious. We're gonna open this up. Oh, I can smell them tomatoes here. 
Look at that, perfection. Pop that, boop. We're gonna set that to the side right there. We're gonna take this whole entire can, we're gonna dump it right into a bowl. I wanna use this one. Get all the last of it out of there. Boy, choosing that spoon really helped. And it really does come down to, to this tomatoes. They are fantastic. And if you're looking for it, this is it right here. Not sponsored by Red Pack Tomatoes. That's right. Red Pack Puree. All right. Now the rest of the sauce, it's really simple. You do not cook a New York style sauce. Don't do it. We're gonna use 14 grams of sugar. All of these measurements are based upon that 29 ounce can. So 14 grams of sugar goes in. And then in here, in here we have one teaspoon of garlic, we have two grams of salt, that is a fine sea salt, three teaspoons of basil, two teaspoons of oregano. And that's it, that's the sauce. So we're gonna mix all of this in here. Get all that goodness in there. And then we're just going to mix it. It's that simple. Y'all can see that. There's not a whole lot of mixing required. And that right there is done. And let me tell you, you may taste it and you may think, wait a minute. Mm. That's what you might think. But wait till you taste it when it's on the pizza. And there's, there's a reason you want 14 grams of sugar. It helps take out a little bit of the tartness out of the puree. Now, the tartness is good and it will show back up, but you wanna kinda of knock the top off, but just the top and let it come back to life. You don't wanna add a whole lot of garlic. You can leave that out if you're not a garlic fan. I love garlic, but I went light on the garlic. The oregano, it's a staple. Basil, it's a staple. Don't skimp, put it in there, and that is your sauce. All right, so it's now been three long days. Look at my beard, it's so much longer now. Now it's time to put our dough and get it in the oven. We take our dough out of the fridge and we have to let it set to room temperature for at least two hours. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get a pizza stone, a big one. A 16 inch is what I recommend. This will produce about two 15 inch pies. You can stretch them to 16 if you want, or you can make them a little thicker for 14 inch if you'd like. 16 inch is marvelous, and it needs to be a thick pizza stone. I'll link one down below. You need to set your oven to 500 degrees. Now we're going to make our dough, and we're gonna use a pizza peel. And why are we gonna use a pizza peel? Because it is literally, trust me, I've tried it. It is literally the easiest way to do it. So now once you've got your oven going at 500 degrees, we need to prepare and get our peel and our dough ready to go. So we're gonna want some semolina, semolina flour. You can use flour, but trust me when I tell you, just get some semolina. It's worth it. You're gonna sprinkle a little bit on here and spread it around. For whatever reason, it works so much. Well, I know the reason. The reason is it is a very fine and coarse Fine and coarse, it's completely two different things. It's, it's, it rolls very, very well on the, the peel itself. So semolina flour, and then we're going to use just regular flour at this point. So let's just move this. 
We're gonna take our dough out. Now, it is going to be a little bit tacky. So we're gonna take some flour and we're just gonna cover the top. Just kind of press it around. Don't press in your dough. Do not punch your dough down. This is not that kind of dough. Okay, once that's all coated and it's no longer sticky on the top, you're gonna start peeling from the bottom. Just peel ever so slightly. Try not to deform it too much. Scrape from the bottom. Because you don't want to mess with this dough too much. You don't want to knead it. You don't want to want it. You want to knead it and want it. All that good stuff. So once we get it out, put it back into its shape, we're going upside down right onto the peel. Now, we're going to take a little more flour and we're going to go over the top here. Don't worry about what it looks like underneath. It don't matter. Now, what you wanna do here is you wanna start from the middle. Do not press very hard. Just kinda of press, see the bubbles coming out? Just kinda of press to the end. Rotate, just kinda of press a little bit. You are not trying to get the center flat. You're just trying to push the air bubbles out to the edge. Rotate it, you see how easy this thing turns? That's the semolina flour. Press it to the edge. You're not trying to make the pizza at this point. You're just trying to get the, the air bubbles out to the edge. Okay, now, there's two methods you can use. You can use a pull and a stretch like this. You're gonna pull from your left hand while you rotate from your right hand. That is one way to do it. I prefer to do the knuckle method. So pick it up and you're gonna let it rest right on your knuckles and let gravity, you're just gonna pull. Let gravity pull it. Don't put your hands in the middle. Just keep going. Just keep going. If you get bubbles, it's okay. Now you'll find it will stretch quite a bit and it won't break. Just keep going. And then you end up with an oblong pie, but you can stretch it right back out. Now, the more you mess with it, the more it's going to want to constrict back down to its original shape. So try to avoid messing with it too much. Now, once I get it into the shape that I like, by messing with it, after I told you not to, is I like to press just around the edges like this. That's doing a couple of things. Number one, it's stiffening the outside. And it's forming that little crust that we all love on the outside of pizza. And it'll also keep it together in the shape. There's a little bubble, don't worry about it. Now, we're going to take some butter. Some butter. All right, we're gonna take some butter and a little brush and don't get it on your you don't wanna get it on your, uh, your peel here. And we're just gonna dab this on here, just on the crust itself, on the outside edge, because this is going to help give it that nice brown crust on the outside. And it also gives it that nice, buttery, delicious flavor that you know you want your pizza to taste like anyway. You could also substitute oil if you wanted, if you, say, didn't like dairy products. But it's gonna make the cheese part just a little bit more difficult. All right, so you can see it's, it's moving like crazy. That's the best part right there. Now, we're gonna put it in the oven for five minutes at 500 degrees. Then we're gonna pull it out, and we're gonna bring it back out here, and we're going to put sauce on it cheese and pepperoni and it's back in the oven for an additional four minutes or so until the cheese is melted. You do not want to separate it and then that outside crust should be nice and brown. All right, we've got our pizza 
back from the oven and it's just, just barely, just barely showing up. We've got it in there for five minutes and we're gonna come out and we're gonna add some sauce. So we're just gonna take a nice big spoonful of this. We're gonna go around just like so. Just want an even light coating. You do not need a lot of sauce. It is a misnomer that you need a lot of sauce to make your pizza. You just want to spread it around, give it maybe a little more right around over here. But that's it. There's no, there's no reason to have too much sauce because it's just going to burn the roof of your mouth like a hot pepperoni or eating that uh, Captain Crunch when you were a kid. All right. Now we got it all the way around the edges. Now we're gonna take this and put it over here to the side. Next, we do the cheese. You want four ounces of, this is low moisture, non-grated mozzarella cheese. You wanna grate it yourself. There's a lot of reasons, but mostly they put stuff in it to keep it from caking and it affects the flavor. So we're gonna spread the mozzarella just finely everywhere all around and four ounces I found is just the right amount for a pizza of this size and you know you're not trying to put on a whole lot of calories I mean maybe you are you know it's your journey that's not mine and we're just gonna go around and now it's just evening out the evening out the humps just like marriage Marriage is, marriage is about evening out the, uh, the good times and the bad and having somebody to do it with. There we go. And by do it with, uh, you, you know what I mean, just as a partner, not, not, not that way. This is a PG show. All right, you want some good quality pepperonis. Maybe you can even get into them if you're nice. I love resealable packages that you can't get in or the resealable packages that you can get in once and they never reseal. All right, we're gonna put a whole bunch of these pepperonis on here. Spread them all out. It's like dealing cards. All right, you get one, I get one, everyone gets one. I don't know what that was. Push these out to the edge because we like to live on the edge. Now in New York, you're not gonna get pepperoni unless you pay the extra. It's not gonna be a dollar slice, but you're not gonna get this much pepperoni either. But this is not New York. This is just replicating New York slices. So now we're going back into the oven, still 500 degrees, and we're gonna cook it for another five minutes or until really, really? Did you snooze it? We always use a timer on this show, but we're gonna go back in 500 degrees for five minutes or until the dark, dark brown crust appears on the outside. Let's do our thing. We're going back in. Close it up. Okay, this is our delicious pizza. Look at that. I mean to tell you, it is phenomenal. And you wanna hear crust? And look at that underneath there. Perfect leopard spotting just like you'd want. And watch what happens when we cut it. It's going close. Look at that. That is an amazing New York slice right there. I mean to tell you, if you just let it sit for a couple of minutes, It'll be absolutely stiff. You can fold it and get that perfect crunch. But look at, look out. That is a good, good crust on that. Look at that. It just holds right up. 
So that's it for our pizza, our New York style. Let me know what you think of this. When you make it, tell me it's the best you've ever had or close to it, or let me know what you would do differently. Because I'm pretty impressed and I'm really excited to bring this one to you because we've been working on it for a long time and you deserve it. So as always, this is Scott Balkum, and I kind of have a catchphrase. It's raw, yeah.